Hello, my name is Shelby Vaughn, Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle at 208 Washington Street in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to invite you to tune in and listen to my broadcast, Flames of Revival, on Faith Television Network. You will be blessed. Welcome to Flames of Revival broadcast. This is Shelby Warner back talking to you about revelation, about an uncovering, about an, 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 an unfolding. All right. Now, let, let, me, let me qualify some things about revelation. Let me just talk to you like this. All right. Um, when there's a revelation that comes from God to your spirit, then it passed from the unknown for as you're concerned. God knows everything. Or to the unseen into the known and the seen. All right? So there's things out there we don't know and we can't see. And you can't figure out. All right? But if you are, if you will trust God's way of doing things and God's way of giving you revelation, then he'll just start showing you stuff. He'll start talking to you. You understand? You, 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 you can kind of go visiting without leaving, if you will, okay? And so, God wants the unseen to come on the scene so it can become reality. Now, this is, this is a, and so knowledge stands between you and revelation. Uh, no, uh, not knowledge. You know, you understand what I'm saying. My people are struggling for lack of knowledge. So what you don't know, you don't know until you know. And then once you know, not knowing leads and knowing is in place. Okay. All right. But there are some things you can't study up on. What you do is you position yourself through prayer and praise and worship, and then God opens you up, and God lets you sense, and, 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 and he, he, he lets you experience his presence. There's stuff out there that people don't know nothing about. You understand? And so there's things, there's the glory cloud can show up. There's, oh my Lord, there's lights in another dimension. God has other things that he can do. There's other, there's other, there's other, there's all kind of stuff out there. Some stuff I can't, you can't explain what it is. It's just there. All right. And so, so God is not trying to fascinate you so much until you can't live your life. That's not the deal. What he does is, it's like, this is my creation. This is my child. You know, it's kind of like a father who, whose son or daughter's grown up, and now they're not obligated to come talk to you about nothing if they don't want to. They don't owe you nothing and all of that. I mean, they owe you respect and all. You know what I'm saying. But you understand what I'm saying. And then they choose to come back and tell me about who I am. Tell me about uh, where we come from. Was I born here? Tell me how we grew up. How did your grandma treat you? How did she cook? How did you? And you know, I don't know, I don't know a human on earth who don't love that kind of stuff because they want to know. They didn't have to want to know. And you love to tell them. You know what I mean? They could come by every day. And well, I want to tell me some old stories about what happened when you was a kid. Tell me, you know, how y'all lived. Tell me what y'all ate. Tell me what y'all played with. Tell me how, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no. And you've seen movies about it, and you've seen because you are connecting to your peers, I mean, to your, uh, your, to your siblings and all, and you are keeping what was and what is alive through conversation because there are some things they will never know until you tell them. Okay, flip that over to God. God loves for you to talk to him. God don't have no problems. You understand? And so let's say, can I ask God questions? You can ask him anything you want. That don't mean he's going to answer you because some knowledge you can't handle. And then some things he won't tell you because you're not ready to hear it. And then some things he wants you to hear later, but you can't hear it now. So he'll delay that revelation because you're not ready to receive from his throne that. Okay, now, let me just make a blanket statement and I want to, uh, say some other things uh, based on what the word says because see the word of God says some things and then uh, you'll read that and 
it, it'll, how can I say it? It'll cause you to wonder. You know, you, you don't doubt it necessarily, but you're just trying to figure out how it happened. And your mind can't go over so far trying to figure out what happened. But you can stand strong and say it in faith and know that it did happen and God said so. And that's just the way it is. So, so, let, so, so let me just start talking about um, how I, I see this revelation and this ability to hear and to know from somewhere else. Okay. Now, a lot of times, okay, Lord, let me see how I want to say this. Um, this is me. This is what I believe. I believe that there were times in the past in life, wait, before I got here for whoever or for the churches right now, no or whatever, where people got revelation, where they saw things, where they knew things, and they didn't know how to say it because nobody else was talking about it. I believe God gave them a real revelation, real revelation. I ain't talking about nothing made up, no spooky, looky stuff. I'm talking about a real revelation for real. And I believe that that, and God wanted them to say certain things, but because of fear of rejection or people thinking, you just crazy, or ain't nobody else preaching that or whatever, I, Shelby, I believe that some revelations are being held up until somebody else, without fear, will take that ball and run with it. I believe that some of our uh, forefathers who couldn't read, but they could say, what happened to them, or they could say what they saw, you know, or they could describe this man came and he had on this gold and whatever, and all, uh, you know, and they might not know about angels, maybe couldn't read, but they knew a man came, and that man said he came from God, and that man said, Tomorrow your crop's gonna do this, and this gonna happen, and where there is no rain or there's no, you know what I mean? But they couldn't tell certain stuff because, number one, they would have been deemed lunatic. And number two, they didn't know how to say some things. And then um, number three, I just think that uh, they were sometimes mystified at what they saw and, and how to say it and, and, and what to look at and all. And so I said, well, I got this analogy and I'm, I'm going to use it today. All right. Now, in Revelation uh, 13 and 8, it says Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. Well, well let, me, let, let me read it just right, exactly like they said it, and then I'm going to show you. All right. Because, see, when I see stuff like this, I said, okay. Now, now, let me tell you this, though, before I go here. I believe the whole Bible. Whatever it say, whether I understand it or not or whatever, you understand, I do the best I can to understand, but I, I, I believe it. I believe everything in this book. Got it? I believe everything in this book. And I don't have to understand everything to believe it happened or it's like God said or whatever. So I don't have no problem with that. None. You understand? So I want you to know I believe this stuff. And I like it. That's the deal. I like knowing. I like this research. I like this. I like it. I like the other world. I like supernatural. I like to see God move and help people and touch people and talk to me and teach me stuff. I love it. I'm telling you right now. It ain't nothing like that. God can speak to you while you riding down the road. God can speak to you in a dream and show you stuff. That's God's way of communicating with his creation. And you ought to welcome it. And you ought to like it. And you ought to desire it. Okay? So I want to say that first. All right. Now, uh, Revelation 13, glory. Verse 8 says, and now, uh, wait, 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 let's say 13. Yeah, Revelation I think that's what I wanted. 13 and 8. Yeah. And all that, well, well, let me do it like this. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain before or from the foundation of the world. Now, if you look at that, it's talking about two or three things at one time. Watch. And all that dwell on earth, stop, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Stop. So there's the book of life of the Lamb written, being recorded while the earth is going on right now. And then it says the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. 
So God, so there is no, see, there is no time with God. God doesn't live in time. There is no, there's a now and there's a now to come. Do you understand? And so, so when God says before the foundation, it's kind of like God told Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. Now, Jeremiah didn't know him, but he said, and I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet while you was in your mother's womb. So I had a plan, but I had to work through the process of life. So your mama had to get pregnant. You had to be born. You had to grow up, learn, read, whatever, get you some understanding so I could reveal to you that I got my work, I got a plan and a purpose for your life, and you're going to be a prophet. You understand? But, but so God was seeing all that at one time. But since there is no time with God, and see, <clears throat> that's what we have a problem. Since there's no time with God, then it ain't no time with God. Do you understand? There's no time. There's no time to measure nothing as such, except concerning the earth. And so that's why God gave us time so we could regulate things and all that. But it don't have nothing to do with him. All right. It's, it's for our use. It, the earth is for us to use. You understand? We need air. We need food. We need water. God don't need to eat, drink, nothing. God don't need it. We do. So he made all this for us. Okay. But, but so Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. So since God is looking at everything at the same time, then he knows that one day we're going to all stand before God and the book's going to be open. So they're going to be books. So there's records being kept in heaven. Do you understand? There, there's records being kept all the time of, of, of records being kept of sermons and stuff. And on this day, Shelby Varner got saved when he was 19 years old in Kilgo, Texas. There is a record on the day I got saved. On this day, Shelby Varner accepted his call to preach on this day, and so and so, blah, 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 like that. First, you know, the first whatever, whatever. And I'm not saying blah, blah disrespectfully. I'm saying it because I don't know what's all written, but I'm telling you it is written. So there's a record kept, so you can't deny it. You can't deny stuff. You can't, you can't deny stuff. You understand? So why God choose to write in a book? I don't know. It's his business. I mean, he knows everything. Yeah, okay. But it's his business. It ain't none of my business. And angels don't know everything. I want you to know that. Angels know what God let them know, what he tell them, and what he sent them. See, people got that mixed up. They think angels, they from God, so they know everything. No, they don't. Angels don't know everything. Angels don't know certain people's name unless God tell them. Angels don't know what to do unless they tell them. Some angels got some rights. They can make choices. Some don't. God got a whole world, you know, and so instead of you spending all your energy trying to run, trying to figure out how that work or try to say what can't work or what don't work, receive the revelation from that arena and let it be to your advantage. You understand? By believing it and listening and paying attention so the heavens can work with you on the earth. Is that clear? So the heavens can work with you on the earth. The Bible says, bless ye his angels that excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his word. It didn't say who had to say it. It says, but, but, but angels move based on the word. And the Bible says they are ministering spirits, sent the minister for us, to help us. So God sent angels to help us. So work with the heavenly host. Work with the other world. Because whether you ever see an angel or not, uh, and I have, and whether you, you people believe you or not or whatever, whatever, they've been around you all the time and they've been aware and they've been assigned and they've been doing a whole bunch of stuff in the unseen, okay? And so um, you don't have to see. I ain't never want to see nothing. I'm starting to want to see some stuff now. And I believe if you want to, you can. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying now. Understand? And so now we get way past church attendance and, and just going to church on Sunday and Wednesday and going home and all of that. We get way, what I'm talking about, way beyond all of that, you know. But that's a start. I'm talking about to where God can help you at, at the dollar store. I'm talking about where God can give you an idea while you're sitting on your front porch. I'm talking about since there's no distance in the spirit realm, God can let you see something going on in Africa and pray for that thing to move or you be or your assignment is to pray for this church in Africa or pray for this man of God. God could give you a vision and show you that person say, I want you to start praying for him. And then one day later in your life, you'll run into that and you'll say, I already saw you before. See, see, but people don't believe that and it's okay because it is true. But the point is that 
You can float along like everybody else, or you can start going into this supernatural dimension. Now, the reason a lot of people don't do this because they think they're going to be weird. You know, they're going to be weirded out. Ooh, we're going for every time you see him, boy, he's jerking his head and all that. You don't see me acting like that. You understand what I'm saying? No, it's not like that. It's just a knowing that you know some stuff and you don't think you're special and you don't think you're better and you don't think you uh, deserve it and you don't think you're nothing. You're just like everybody else. It just happens that God trusts you with information that he wants you to release when he tell you uh, some information that he don't want you to release, but he wants you as his child to know. Do you understand? That it's a personal relationship. Parents know what I'm talking about. Some of their kids, you can tell them anything. Some kids, you can't tell them nothing. Don't tell them. You know what I mean? And so, it ain't that you love one kid better than the other one and all that. And you might, I don't know. But you understand my point. Uh, where it's like, okay, I can talk to him because he understands. Or I can talk to her. And so, so when you want to reveal whatever, and you, you, can, you feel safe, I can talk to her. And that's your child. I ain't talking about no stranger, you know, and all of that. And so, you'll start to... There's this dimension, what'll happen is, you'll start just knowing what you can do and what you can't. And, and then you'll start knowing how God really wants you to live. You'll go back and then it'll be like the original intent, you know. See, because the devil came through and got man to disobey and then his thinking was changed and his hearing was messed up, seeing was in the camp and all of that, and it messed up the relationship and it closed the heavens, all right? So Jesus had to come and die and redeem. And now you got the devil who's the enemy that's trying to confuse and attack and distort and distract the men and women of God so they won't get to where they're going. Or get, y'all understand my point? You understand? And so I'm telling you that if you would just keep reading this Bible, you don't have to understand how this stuff. I don't know how a man is preaching over here and he disappeared and he's 26 miles away, but it's in the Bible. I don't know how God took a, a stick that Moses found on the ground and made the molecules come alive and turn into a snake. And then how he made them reverse. I don't know nothing about that. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know how uh, God told Moses, take your hand, put it in here, pull it out. <laughs> <You know? coughs> I don't know. <coughs> I don't know how Moses put the in his staff in the water and all of a sudden blood showed up. I don't understand how God told Moses, stretch your rod out, and all of a sudden he did, and like a magnet, all the frogs started coming out of the water, climbed up in everybody's oven and their house and their bedchamber and all of that. I don't know how the frogs understood God. That ain't none of my business. But it's interesting to me to see stuff like that because if God can do that, my light bill shouldn't be much of a problem. When I need something or if I'm ministering, I'm praying for people and, and I need help, or I need God, I need the anointing or something like that, shouldn't be no big deal. If, if I'm working on a business deal that God told me to go into. See, a lot of times people go in business, God didn't tell you to do that. Somebody else might be highly successful, but if God didn't tell you to do that, then he didn't tell you to do that. And then he didn't promise to help you be out of his will. So you need to learn your purpose and your plan, and then you need to follow it. This gifting that comes on me at different times, um, I didn't, I always wanted to know, you know, how God moved and stuff. And I'm, I'm telling you how I got there. The, what I'm telling you is what I started doing. I started to meditate and I started reading about all the miracles and thinking about them. I just think about them. Man, I don't know how you did that, Lord, but I know you, I believe you, you know, and I just had it. I loved it. I read them over and over again because I just like what I'm looking at. I don't know why. I just like it. You understand? But it keeps me God aware and it makes my life better and more fuller, if you will, even with all the tragedies going on and all of that. See, I already know it's appointed under me and one time to die after that judgment. I already know I'm going to heaven. I ain't worried about heaven. Heaven is the last thing I'm worried about. I just don't want to go now because I want to finish what God sent me to this planet to do. And I want to activate as many people as I can while I'm here so they'll know. And I want God to work the miraculous through me so the whole world will be convinced that miracles still happen and they can jump in that 
and then God can let miracles loose on the whole world. And he got a lot of other preachers think just like me. So I want him to use everybody, but, I, but they can't do my part. You understand? I can't do your part. So I understand it. So I don't want to check out myself. I want to go home. I'm tired. I ain't tired, and I don't want to go home. I go, because when I get there, I'm going to be there. I know that. I, I ain't worried about heaven. I'm telling you right now. No, I want to finish this. I don't want to go close to heaven right now. Let them go on a visit. You know, I go, I take some visits now. Come on back. But God know what I mean, and you know what I'm talking about. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm going there one day when it's time, but I don't want to go today. You understand? You understand? I know, I know that sound, but that's, that's, that's the truth. Okay. Uh, but they are just knowing. Well, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Uh, one of my stories. Years ago, <coughs> I got a cousin who had been in the military, and he went AWOL. Of course, you know, he hid it, and we didn't know and all that. We thought he was done, out, through, whatever. And, but he went AWOL. So he had been running and hiding and working a regular job, and I used to work with him. You know what I mean? But, but he, hadn't, he hadn't told nobody his secret, whatever, and it didn't matter. You know, I, it wasn't my business. And so then they, it finally caught up with him. And so they found him. They caught up with him. And, or they sent him. Or they, anyway, they ended up knowing where he was. And so they gave him a chance to come turn himself in. And so uh, I went to the visit one day. They asked me to come by the house. And see, here's the thing about my kin folks. They know I hear from God. A whole lot of people know. None of them don't join church. And that's okay. They don't have to never join church. I'm going to still help them if I can because that's my assignment. Everybody didn't join Jesus' church. He fed 5,000. Where were they? He didn't have no big old 5,000 member church. Uh, when he got crucified, where were the 5,000 men plus women and children rooting for Jesus? You didn't see them nowhere. But he still did what he did because he did the will of God. You know why? Because he said, I always do what the Father tells me to do. So I, don't even, I ain't concerned about that no more. My, I'll pray for a drunk on the street and keep on going. I don't care. Understand? Because God is showing mercy through me to help somebody else. And that's, that's how I'm, I'm happy because I get blessed for obeying. Anyway, my cousin, uh, I went by the sent for him and he said, oh, so he started telling me the story, you know, and he started apologizing. I said, no, you ain't got to apologize to me. You don't want in trouble. <laughs> he said, so I'm supposed to go back on this day. And he told me that they're going to lock me up and all because, you know, I've been running and dodging them and all of that. And, you know, I forgot how long it had been or whatever. And he said, so I'm going to be gone at least a year with good behavior, and then they'll let me out a year from now. Now, this was like probably the first of November. This was years ago. You understand? So he was crying, and his wife was crying, and all the little kids was crying. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. So I was just standing there. And uh, God said, I mean, this, this wind and this presence, and God said, tell him he'll be back by Christmas. I said, what? He said, tell him he'll be back by Christmas. I said, hey, man, I got to tell you what God said. I said, but you need to believe me. He said, oh, you know, because I believe in anything you say. I said, God told me to tell you he'll be back by Christmas. What? His wife, you know, everybody stopped crying. The kids, everybody. What? Could it be? His wife, you know, and the kids. I said, yeah, God said, I mean, not Shelby. God said you'll be back before Christmas. I said, do you believe what I say? I went down, I talked to the kids. They were little. I talked to everybody. I said, you believe what I say? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Do you believe what I say? Uh-huh. You believe what I say? He crying, his wife crying. Oh, Lord, I'll be so happy, his wife. I said, do you believe what I say? I said, because God sent me here with that message. She said, I believe you. I said, hey, man, you believe what I say? He said, I believe you. I said, okay, go on, turn yourself in, whatever you got to do, however y'all set it up. I say, by Christmas, you'll be back. Just let me know. He said, okay. So he got, he left and went. And I don't know what happened in that month and a half or whatever, whatever, but they redid some stuff and changed some stuff and, and decided we're going to just show you some mercy and all of that. And uh, I want you to get back home to your family before Christmas. And on December the 23rd, this was years ago, he arrived at his house with a clean record and they let it squash everything. And he was at home in less than 60 days with no record. Now, how did I know that? Because God told me to say that to him. Do you understand? So you understand why I'm always excited about this kind of life? Because I don't know everything. I don't know a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of stuff I don't know until I hear it and then I say it. 
So God will make you look like you know what you're doing, but even when you don't. <laughs> I thank God like listening to me preach too, or talk, or teach. I thank God just like that. Shep, yeah, that's my boy. I, I really do. See, I ain't playing. I thank God just love listening to me. Say, boy, this boy kind of crazy, but I like him. I made him like that. Or he just like, I ain't do that to him. But he, anyway, that's how he is. And that, that's my, he mine. You understand? I believe God enjoy his children just like you enjoy yours. Or the grandchildren with their little personalities and all of that. It's the same thing. It's, it ain't no different. Actually, it's not. It's the same thing. But, but what I'm telling you is I didn't pray for God to give me that word. I didn't pray for God to open up and show me that. I didn't pray for, for God to, to do that. I didn't, it, wasn't like, it wasn't that. That wasn't the deal. I didn't do none of that. It wasn't that kind of deal. As I stood there quietly and watched everybody cry, and they were crying hard, boy. Oh, Lord, we ain't never been well. Oh, you know, never been apart doing, because he'd been running a long time. Never been apart, or maybe they just decided to let him run. I'll get him when we get ready. Because a lot of times they'll get you when they get ready, so they don't care. You know. But either way, whatever the reason, it wasn't my business. See, I didn't, I didn't preach no sermon. Uh, you know, you broke the law, and so on and so on. Forget all of that. I just did what God told me to do. Now, I think that if you're going to be a good saint, a good preacher, and anointed, or if you're just a believer, don't matter. God can use you for miracles, signs, and wonders. You don't have to be no preacher. God can use you to prophesy, to help people, to tell them, to know things. You don't have to be no preacher. Do you understand? But you have to want it. And you have to meditate. And you have to spend time. And you have to believe. And when he start telling you stuff, you can't let fear be your determiner. Don't let fear cause you to decide whether you're going to do the will of God or not. You understand? Because God didn't give you the spirit of fear. So I am telling you, you can, walk, you can walk in this dimension starting today if you will listen to what I'm telling you. You don't have to know, I got to fast 40 days. No, you don't. You got to listen to what I'm telling you, and you got to yield to God. And I'm telling you, the Spirit is with you anyway, in you already if you say. So he can start talking to you right now, make you understand right now, and your life will change right now. Okay? So you need to tune back in because I'm going to finish this. So this is Shelby Warner. For Manawak, Texas, God bless you. I'm glad you tuned in. Remember, you got what it takes. It takes what you've got to change the world. Bless you. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>if you're ever in the Anahuac area, you need to come visit. We have our regular service at uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And uh, on Wednesday is our Bible study night at 7 o'clock. All right? And uh, we pray for the sick. If that's what you need, come on. You are welcome. This is my personal invitation to you. Also, you can tune in the Faith Television Network. I'm on at 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. And uh, I think I can teach you some things. The name of the broadcast is Flames of Revival. And I'll be looking to see you.